We're here at the Vienna Conference. The reason our program that we're doing is to really get people into the fields around HIV and AIDS. There's an awful lot of people who are getting ready to retire and people who are leaving the field because it's time for them to move on. And we definitely need new, uh, excited, um, and vibrant, and intelligent, and um, you know, just people who really like the field to get into it and, and find that, uh, I find that exciting. We're going to start just at, by asking both of you, what got you into the field? What, what inspired you to move into the field of the work that you're doing? If I can begin first, yes. Uh, the prevalence of HIV in India, especially in southern India, where I hailed from, was enormous the scope of work that we had to do and that was one of the reasons why I jumped into the field though it is a very competitive field I, I really feel that that is the place where I, sh I have to render my best. Um, growing up in the United States as a young child I saw the fact that our country spent the most on health care of almost any country and yet there were still so many who were uninsured who didn't receive health care going on in my career and as I went to law school and studied international human rights law, I began to see more the ability to intersect health, human rights, um, and access to, to medicines for people. Thank you. And now we have actually the four more wonderful people that have just joined us and I'm going to ask them to take the stage. Thank you. Uh, I'm Gesine Meyer-Rath. I'm a faculty member at Boston University, but I work in Johannesburg um, at a health economics research office a collaboration between Boston University and the University of the Witwatersrand. Yes. My name is Gabriel Shami, and um, I'm a clinician working at the University of California, San Francisco, in the Division of HIV and AIDS and the uh, Center for AIDS Prevention Studies. Uh, my primary interest is in HIV TB co-infection um, in clinical research and epidemiology. Thank you. My name is Michaela Maria Leslie Rule, and I'm from the United States, so it says Tanzania. Um, I am a recent graduate of the University of Washington with an MPH MPA, um, focusing on health policy. My name is my name is Khalil Elwardigi. I'm the head of advocacy at an NGO based in France called Coalition Plus, which is a coalition of aid service organizations in eight uh, countries, mostly in Africa. And as part of the advocacy program, we've engaged in research on blockages to access to generic medicines. So I started off as a clinician. I worked in pediatrics in Germany um, and worked for WHO in the health economics program. Uh, the, what got me into health economics, I'm a health economist now, is the idea that whatever we do, and would, especially what we would like to do, and the interventions we would like to start covering people with, we will always have to make the economic argument as well. And you know that when you work as a clinician, people from the insurance agencies will ask you if you couldn't have discharged kids earlier, you know, three instead of five days. Um, what got me into HIV was simply the realization that even though we were able to treat kids and keep them free of opportunistic infections pretty much uh, very well in, in Germany or in uh, uh, other countries that I had worked in, um, obviously the, the the bulk of the problem lay elsewhere, and the economic case especially had to be made for other countries. Um, early in my career, my early 20s, um, I spent some time uh, both working in a uh, HIV clinic um, in uh, the Upper East Side of, of Manhattan. Um, it was in 1996, so it was a real opportunity to see how a combination antiretroviral therapy uh, was changing HIV in, in the United States and Europe. Um, and then shortly thereafter, but a couple of years later, right before medical school, uh, I moved to uh, West Africa in Burkina Faso um, and really saw a different face of, of HIV and AIDS um, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, the following year, I started medical school, interested in, in clinical work um, and research. And um, seeing that con the contrast and the double standard of care in the United States and, and in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, I became felt compelled and, and passionate about um, becoming engaged in uh, HIV research in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and my research is currently conducted in Uganda. When I got into the field, I really uh, became aware of the extent to which uh, tuberculosis was the leading cause of infectious death in, the, in HIV. And HIV was really fueling the uh, tuberculosis spread. Um, the enormity of these two epidemics uh, struck me. and. Um, 
I was also was surprised to find that there's really not uh, an enormous amount of research in this area and that we really need further research in this area. So that's, that's what motivates me to, uh, to pursue the research that I'm currently doing. Um, I, I started out as a performing artist and did a um, Bachelor of Fine Arts at NYU. Um, and I ended up going to South Africa on a study abroad program as an undergrad um, to look at arts and social change. And that kind of uh, opened the gateway for me to start working in, in prison, specifically um, doing art and storytelling. Um, and at some point, I sort of decided that I needed more credibility um, to not only to be an artist working on these issues, but to be able to be an artist that can speak to how art can inform public policy. So I went back to school to do my, my masters, um, and the research that I, uh, that I submitted in the abstract that I'll present today is um, on gender-based violence in Tanzania, and specifically, um, it, I saw it as an opportunity to, uh, to um, use the rigor of research in a film methodology, so I created a film in addition to <clears throat> so it all started when I, I got an internship at a, an AIDS organization in 1998 and I, they uh, asked me to work on pharmaceutical issues because of my uh, university degree and uh, we, we were meeting with uh, drug companies, uh, manufacturers of HIV medicines on a weekly basis and in those days the, the, the pricing policy of those companies were outrageous where the prices were higher in the poorest countries than even in France. So I ended up joining uh, an AIDS activist group in Paris called Act Up Paris. And that was 10 years ago. And uh, two years ago, I joined another organization called Coalition Plus, this coalition of AIDS organizations in various countries. And we've tried to uh, understand why it's so, so much harder to get generic versions of interferon as it is at present to get generic versions of antiretrovirals, and that's why, why what prompted us to get into that research on the, on the intellectual property and ethical blockages to the development of generic interferon. What is the challenge that you face, either immediately or maybe in the immediate near future? The abstract that we uh, presented to IAS was focused on um, clinical outcomes of uh, HIV and TB and the, and the impact of antiretroviral therapy on TB outcomes, but our group is extremely interested in preventing tuberculosis um, in uh, HIV infection, so preventing it before it becomes active disease. So I'd say the largest challenge that we face is really the enormity of the epidemic, um, of the two epidemics, and when we think about a third of the world's population is estimated to be infected with TB, and the fact that this is an airborne bacteria, it's spread casually in many cases, um, I think that's the, the single greatest challenge we face is this large, susceptible, uh, immune-suppressed population, HIV-infected population, uh, exposed to a, an airborne bacteria um, that's uh, spreading. Um, the, the abstract that I presented is about uh, gender-based violence in Tanzania, and one of the kind of primary findings is about definition, and I think probably um, the, or the definition of violence that exists um, in Tanzania. So I think. Um, both during the research and probably as it, as it, we kind of disseminate the film and disseminate the, the, the paper, um, there's a question about we, this, this idea that we aspire towards having a universal definition of violence, um, but it doesn't exist yet, and how can we move towards that? So our research shows that um, because for biomedicines, the, the, the clinical requirements to get the, 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 medical, the medicine to market are higher, that, that poses special blockages for when you want to do generic versions of a, bio, of a biomedicine. And the, the biggest challenge in, in trying to assess exactly where the problem lies in doing the research, um, the challenge was access to information about what goes on between the regulators and the, the drug companies themselves. For example, when a drug company changes its own manufacturing process, it, it should trigger the same problems that it already triggers for a generic companies, but probably it doesn't. So we would like to find out exactly how the regulators, the FDA, the European Medicines Agency, deal with, with, with those problems. And the challenge for the, for the issue, for access to interferon, uh, is mostly will, what, what will it take for the drug companies to agree to license their know-how and, and not require the duplication, the unethical duplication of those clinical trials just to get a generic to market. 
And if they won't, will the, the government use the existing provisions under law to compulsory license that know-how? Uh, listening to your stories, it's fascinating to me how you, you have a, quite a twisted line to get to where you are today, you know, listening to Catherine and to Michaela and all of you, actually. So w one question is, you know, what's motivated you to, to do this twisted story? And secondly, what advice would you give to other young people? Well, just on, on the question of whether... I would recommend that, that other, other people who are beginning their careers get into this field. I would say absolutely. Um, I probably couldn't have predicted 10 years ago exactly where I'd be now, whether I would have gone down the science track or down the law track, but, but fortunately I've been very, very honored to have the opportunity to, to blend the two together. So I, I can talk about the advocacy part of, of my job, for example, and I would totally recommend to, to get into that because when you're outside of it, that, that was my case before I even started engaging in activism or advocacy, I assumed that there was, you know, li little you can actually change about those policies. It, it was back in 99 where when you could even say that people with AIDS in developing countries should be treated because they, they were telling you that it's too high technology, uh, they, that, that it's, that first let them have uh, clean water. And, you know, in those days, you could even have the conversation about about how to treat people. They would shut you down before that. And, and now we have five million people on treatment. And I think for us, we come into this work with this uh, certain advantage of only ever having known antiretrovirals being given out to, uh, to developing countries. And we are certainly building, we are standing off the shoulders of you guys. So we are certainly building on that kind of standard that you said that no one dares to uh, violate again and go back um, uh, below. Um, I, I genuinely think I, I have a very similar story that I uh, started as a clinician and then discovered that just this kind of one-to-one -one, uh, patient thing wasn't quite my thing. So whoever um, thinks along similar lines, um, find your issue and then start from there. All the skills, all the, you know, whatever the jobs will actually flow from there once you're passionate about a thing. Um, I'm still practicing and seeing um, uh, an HIV positive uh, patient panel in San Francisco. Um, and also see patients uh, in Uganda. Um, and to address your first question of motivation, um, it's really my interaction with patients. It's a frequent, you know, constant weekly reminder, daily reminder um, of what motivates me to, to practice in this field and to pursue research in this field. Um, and, and I do clinical research, so that, so that works well. But uh, so I'd say first and foremost, my motivation is, is patients. And when you seeing people um, dealing with HIV, um, telling you their stories, it, it's, it's extremely motivating. You know, there's no set path that you have to be on and the only one way to do it. And in fact, that's a bad model. And I think the model of coming at it from just such a ver you know, varied experience is, is a really wonderful thing and enriches the way uh, that we get to look at, look at things. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that'd be the main, the main advice I would give to young, young people. And the other is, of course, just to, if you're feeling idealism, go with it. You know, it, it's okay to, even if you hit the, the realities uh, on the ground of trying to make change happen. Um, it's, it's wonderful to have that ideal in front of you, and I think the investigators that surround us here and um, really push for that ideal. Let's see, I think, I'm, I, think I was motivated initially to look at, um, to look at HIV um, and kind of to participate and contribute um, based on disparity, basically, kind of an awareness of disparities in the world, and I think that that was sort of at the very, very beginning when I was much younger, younger than I am now. Um, that's what really kind of infused me with this sense of social responsibility, was that there are massive disparities in the world, and what can I do to affect change towards, you know, more equity? Um, the, in terms of would I recommend this, I just want to say that to be, to, number one, to have an abstract, um, uh, accepted and then number two to be recognized in this way by IAS and ANRS is phenomenal as an artist because from a multidisciplinary background and to be someone that normally isn't sitting in this room as a researcher um, I say to anyone who's a dancer who's an actor who's a storyteller who's a filmmaker that there is a role for you um, in this field that there's a there's a responsibility um, that you have with those tools to affect change in this in this in HIV and in disparities